morning, my dear brethren. May the Lord bless you very richly. I send greetings to you from the city of Alicante. I am in the home of some uh, br brethren that uh, were congregating with us in, uh, well, in Tenerife, and um, we appreciate them, and they loved us a lot too. And it's in the house of uh, our brother Maxi and the wife Carmen, and I'm sending you the devotional from here. As of today, we're going to be reflecting in what we know of the minor prophets, uh, starting with the prophet Hosea and ending with the Malachi, Malachi which is the last one in the Old Testament. We're going to go to chapter 2, specifically in uh, verse 16 to 23, and the word of the Lord says, And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me Ishti, my husband, and you no longer will call me my master, Bali, for I will take from the mouth of the Baals, and they shall be remembered by their name no more. In that day I will make a covenant for them with the beast of the field, with the birds of the air, with the creeping things of the ground, bow and sword of the battle, I will shatter from the earth to make them lie down safely. I will betroth you for me forever, yet I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice. In loving kindness and mercy, I will betroth you to my faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord, and it shall come to pass in that day, they will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth. The earth shall answer with grain, and with new wine, and with oil. They shall answer Jezreel. Then I will sow her for myself in the earth, and I will have mercy on her who had not mercy. Then I will say to those who were not my people, you are my people, and they shall say, you are my God. There are game playing with the situation that Hosea had and the name that he had with his uh, children, the Lord intends to transmit through this prophet a message to the people of Israel. I say Israel because the country had been divided into the tribes of the north, 10 of them. They had adopted or uh, the tribe of the north and then the south is uh, the tribe of the Judah. The prophet Hosea uh, shared his message, prophetic message, to the ten tribes of the north. And in this moment, the situation that they had socially was an authentic disaster. There were a degradation, a moral degradation to, uh, that was horrible. And in the middle of that chaos is where the prophet Hosea is, it finds himself. And he tries, through his messages, uh, first to denounce the unfaithfulness of the people of Israel through to their God, a God that had blessed them, a God that has prospered them in many occasions, that had protected them from so many disgraces. Now it's an unfaithful country and it's totally gone to idolatry and they find worshiping an idol called Baal. And now we're gonna explain why never you will call me Baali or my husband. And the prophet not only denounces the unfaithfulness of the tribes of the north of the kingdom of Israel, but also he intends to try on a graphic way and a very clear way and simple way, but direct way of the faithfulness and the love of God. So one hand is a faithful country and then there is a faithful God. And then there is an idolater country. And on the other hand, that God that is alive and through the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that took him out of the land of Egypt, out of a slavery, trying to seduce, trying to move the hearts of the people so that they will return to the Lord, so that they will leave idolatry, and they will go and have communion with him again. By the way, idolatry, as we have said before, is a horrible sin, because it's like an adultery, a spiritual adultery. It's like a, if a husband abandons their, their husband to go after somebody else, or a husband abandons his wife to go uh, fall in love with somebody else. In the spiritual world, the, adult, the spiritual adultery is the idolatry. It's when a person knows there is a God, and they have uh, left messages and commandments for us in his word, but we just left, leave him, and then we start worshiping and honoring other gods. 
entre comillas. In, in quotes, Hay un único Dios, there is only one God, the, the Lord says, and you will only serve him and love him. But when a person starts to mix a little bit of idolatry and a little bit of worshiping God, or they leave God forever, forever is an adultery, adultery speaking, and is being unfaithful to a God that merits all our worship, all our uh, adoration and all our honor, and we start to share that glory and that attention to, with other gods. That is the situation, terrible situation that the people of Israel were, were found. And this is the historic moments, 722 years before Christ, where the prophet Hosea, it starts to, to wake up the people of Israel to remind them about the faithfulness and the love of God. Now in verse 16, There is two words, and I want to show Ishti and Bali. Ish means men. Ishti, it says, my man or my husband. And the word Baal is the mister. Do not confuse them with Adonai. But also it means Lord, but it's my husband. What the Lord wanted is that never again would be from the people of Israel from their mouths to say Baali. That says never again, never again, you're going to use this word, the Baali, that means my, my Lord or my husband, and you're going to substitute that for the word Ishti, that means my, my Lord. So it is a, a way to change the vocabulary of the people of God. It's a way to warn the people of God that it's enough to be worshiping other gods that are false, Images, imag images created by men that have eyes but not see and have mouth but they don't speak. It's enough to be a worshiping those men created images that have no power to do harm or do good. And that was a way that to start treating with the people of Israel so that they will return to the God that hears, the God that sees, the God that knows, the God that frees, the God that had done in the past many, many mi miracles. And they wanted to continue to do that. On the other hand, we know that the family and the marriage of, of Hosea was very particular because he married a, a woman that was a Gentile and met a woman that was uh, unfaithful, just as the people of Israel, but he has to go uh, redeem it, uh, pay for her, and go, and, and they have uh, two children, that Lord Ruhama, and the other one that said, that means not love, and then the other one was Lo Ammi, which is you're not my people. Through these names, the Lord intends to try to use these circumstances of the prophet Hosea to transmit a message to the people of Israel. So it is time to return to God. You have gone astray for all, for, to Baal, but, uh, worshiping other gods, but there is, there is time that you return to the to my ways and that you will fall in love again with me as I have loved you in spite of your rebellions and disobediences and your unfaithfulness. The question that I want to ask this morning to you, my dear brethren, that you see and listen to me right now, is when are you going to return to God? All the ones that have gone straight, all the ones that have stopped congregating, all the ones that by different reasons They don't want to read the Word of God and, or go to church or love the Lord or, or serve Him or being with Him in ministry. When are you going to leave that way, that wrong way, and you're going to return to put your hand on the, on the field, leaving, leaving behind your commentaries, the critics, and all the things that they have done to you, that humanly spe speaking, you're right, but does not justify the fact that you abandon your God. Men can hurt you. Men can uh, treason you. Men can do all kinds of damage, but the Lord is a God of love that wants to, to heal your wounds, want to heal your heart. He wants to restore your communion with Him. Men have failed you, pastors have, have failed you, family have failed you, all that you want. But the Lord will never abandon you. He will continue loving you with an eternal love. And He is calling you today through this simple message. But He is always touching and calling the, the door of your heart. So do not continue saying what they did to you or they didn't do or they said about you. 
to justify your rebellion, to justify your your going stray from the ways of the Lord. Come back to the Lord. Come back to the Lord. He says, come do, to me, those who are uh, hardened, that I will make you rest. It is true, men can fail us, churches, the, the shepherds, it doesn't matter, the friends, whatever you may say, but the Lord is always, always with open arms, open, uh, waiting for you to heal your heart, to help you uh, uh, just go through the past. You cannot be longer be a victim of the past. It's been a long time. And when you speak about your pain, it's like if it has been done to you today. And that means that your wound is open and the only one that can heal The only one that can help you li be lifted up and walk in victory without going to one side or the other is the Lord. Let the Lord heal your wound. Learn to forgive. Learn to fall in love with God and you will realize that yes, like I have said before, people can fail you and institutions and in churches can fail you and all of that that you want to say. But the Lord is faithful and He loves you and He wants to... to to caress your your wounded heart and he wants to break uh, to break you but with his love with his faithfulness with his presence so that you will know that that they wounded him also they abandon him and they say bad things about him but when he says to his disciples he says look at my hands and feet they were not bleeding they were healed wounds and not with scars but they were healed when you can see the, the wounds but those wounds just reminded him the suffering and the pain but his presence was the signal of his victory over death over past over satan etc you can also we are able to be able to talk about the past of the things they said about you of all the unfaithfulness that you receive but you will talk for the honor and the glory of god you will talk from a heart not hurt and not broken not from a wounded heart bleeding constantly but from a restoration that is produced by the powerful hand of our lord jesus christ let the lord heal you come to the lord the lord loves you the lord is waiting for you for a, for a long time so you that have gone astray come back to him repent seek god and the lord will always be ample to forgive you and he will put you in first line because if even if men don't trust you if you have broken many things or they have broken you in the lord there is always a possibility of restoration of a starting anew look at david look at moses look at peter and so many so many characters that made a lot of mistakes and sin and they they, they hurt him but they came to history as great men of god And to you, it happens the same thing, even as long as you come back to the Lord and you give him your heart again, and you leave him to do everything, and that time and his hand will put everything in order. Why don't we just pray to the Lord and say, Lord, I want today to come back to give my life to you again. I want to serve you again. I want to fall in love with you again, as I did before or, or a long time ago. I want to start anew. And with your help, I'm going to do it in the name of Jesus. Let's pray to the Lord, my dear brethren. Blessed Heavenly Father, we give you infinite thanks because you allow us uh, to see one more day. And we can start, Lord, with you a new day. A day in which we want to you to restore hearts. In, we want you to do miracles and wonders. Lord, I pray for all those people that have gone astray, those people who have fallen, and those that were preaching your word at one time and serving you, and they abandon everything. Lord, may they be able to overcome those wounds from the past, that they pass the page, and they see that in Christ they can do everything, because there is victory, there is restoration in Christ, there is life and life abundantly. That's why, Lord, we ask you that many, many that have gone astray, will come back to your ways and start to to receive testimonies from them that that their hearts were touched and tested and broken they decided to come back to you we put our lives in your hands in the precious name of jesus amen and amen my dear brother may the lord bless you i repeat we are 
in the city of Alicante in Spain doing this devotional. We will be visiting uh, uh, brothers and sisters from our virtual church. Thank you again for all praying for us, for all of the ones that are supporting this first missionary trip that we're doing. We're blessed, we're happy, we feel used by the hand of the Lord. And it is a blessing to be able to know so many brothers and sisters. Some of them have come to the Lord and some of them have come back to the Lord. And we have are getting to know each other. And we're having an extraordinary time. I send greetings from Elena and I. May the Lord bless you. May we have a day full of peace, of joy, of victory. And that the blessing of God will never go away from our lives. Greetings to all of you. And we'll see you tomorrow in the devotional that also we're going to be reflecting on the book of Hosea. I encourage you to, that you start today reading this book in which you're going to be blessed by it and treated by the Lord. May the Lord bless you.